What's up everyone, welcome back to another Gwent video. This is going to be the final uh, video covering all the leaks for the upcoming Harvest of Sorrow sub-expansion for Price of Power. If you guys didn't miss my previous videos, do check them out. Uh, today, it's going to be a pretty lengthy video. And the reason for this is because, uh, first of all, I'm going to be covering the remaining neutral card and all of the Northern Realm cards, giving my thoughts on them. But also, today, uh, CDPR re released a... Um, What's it called? They released a dev update video where they also went over not only the uh, the remaining NR card and the neutral card, but also patch 9.4, which is actually pretty decent. There's some decent changes in here that I think are worth covering in a video. Uh, so yeah, uh, but first things first, I want to address some comments I got in my monster video. Uh, a lot of you gave, uh, gave me your thoughts, which is good to see. Uh, a lot of you uh, came up with stuff like, you know, um, which is Sabbath is good with Keltalus. You can res Keltalus uh, as one of your tallest units, and that's a good thing. That definitely is a very viable strategy. Uh, but one person uh, commented saying that uh, I think they misread the text. They said that uh, you can summon as many as your highest units from your graveyard. That is incorrect. The wording is very similar to Burnabrand slash uh, Snowdrop. Summon up to three highest power units. So if your opponent doesn't have three units in the graveyard for some reason, like maybe they have only two, you'll only summon those two. And then summon as many, as many, which is the same as up to. So the up to and the as many are the same here. So if you summon up to two, you'll you'll summon at, uh, the same, which is two as well. It's not, uh, so think of it like Burner Brand. Draw up to two cards, then discard the same amount of cards. So if with Burner, if you draw only one card, you'll only discard one card. Same thing with tackle decision. If you draw up to th maybe you know draw up to three cards. So if you draw two cards, you'll shuffle back two cards. So just keep that in mind. Uh, with that out of the way, let's jump into the neutral reveal first, which I think is awesome because it's actually a very lore friendly card. Uh, it's an epic card. Six for seven, Alyssa Henson, human mage. The card art is awesome, by the way. Now, if you guys don't recognize this name, this is because she is actually the narrator of the current journey that's going on. So if you go to journey, this is Alyssa Henson right here. This is her young, uh, this is when she was a girl, when she was attending Aratusa. But the card art clearly showcases her as an adult in a very vengeful state, you know, almost. Now, if you guys haven't been reading the journey, I highly recommend it. it actually, it's actually a really good read. But there are hints to something um, major happening in, uh, having, ha having happened in Alyssa's life that I think we're going to see in the upcoming uh, weeks, you know, and I think this art is actually spoiling it. You can see here, that's uh, Octavia Hale and that's Ignatius Hale. The Fabian's missing, but anyway, it looks like she's doing something, you know, she's getting revenge or seeking vengeance on these two for something they might have done. My prediction, they probably were responsible for the deaths of many of her friends and even maybe her relatives at Aratusa. That's my prediction. All right. Lore friendly out of the way, let's jump into the deploy. Shuffle a special card from your graveyard to your deck. If it was a bronze, also shuffle one additional copy of that special. You either die hero or lo live long enough to ex be exposed as a villain. Obviously a Dark Knight reference. This card is really good. Uh, this card is very, it's like a uh, neutral Asir Bar Anahid, um, except only for specials, obviously. Uh, it's interesting because if you run this in something like um, uh, you know you can you can return one of your uh, echo cards. Let me just quickly jump into the deck builder just to showcase the echo. So, oh, uh, oh Neuromancy, where are you? Where are you, Neuromancy? There you are. So the thing about this is, is that echo cards only gain doomed once they come back into your hand. So they don't get doomed the first time they enter the graveyard. So with Alyssa, you can actually return the same Echo card and use it potentially three times in a game. That's really good, especially for Oniromancy, Amphibious Assault, which is one of the best Echo cards in the game. Uh, maybe Blood Eagle if you want, you know, like, like a Warrior deck. Those are the three major ones, I would say. This is a really strong card. You can replay Heat Wave, you can replay um, any major special card you can think of. Harmony, you can replay Waters of Brocklon. You know, play Waters of Brocklon in the first round. Get yourself, a, you know, some strong Harmony engines on the board. And then replay it in round three once you shuffle it back in with Alyssa Henson. This does shuffle. It's uh, it's not on top of your deck, so you're not guaranteed to draw into it. Think of, like, Lippy, for example. But I think this is a really good card. I think there's some really interesting stuff you can do with this. I would give this a 4 out of 5. I think it's a very strong card. Love the artwork. Love the lore. Love the eff uh, effect.
fantastic. As I'm going to say this right now, the price of power neutrals have been phenomenal. If they don't see play, at least they're unique. All their effects are fun. Even Dwimvendra, who isn't the most popular card in the game, but you know she's fun, right? Uh, I think somebody exper I think it was Fuchsia Briefs who experimented with a double sunset Wanderers deck using her. That was a lot of fun to watch. Anyway. With the neutral out of the way, let's jump into the NR cards. Congratula congratulations on graduating from the academy. Time to show what you've learned on the battlefield. Hell yes. These NR cards, by the way, are incredible. I am a huge fan of what NR has received. First up, let's talk about the rare card, Illumini. You know, human mage. Uh, you can see a Banar student, you know, all grown up, and a and an Arethusa student, all grown up, you know, working together. Looks like looks really cool, doesn't it? I love the artwork. Uh, deploy. If both values are equal to or higher than four, Gain zeal. Order melee damage an enemy unit by one. Order ranged boost an allied unit by zero. Values correspond to the highest patience achieved by your Ban Ard student or Aratusa student guards. Deep down, they had both been waiting for this moment for a long time. Live targets had been a bit of a taboo in academia. Yeah, these guys enjoy, you know, the fight. But yeah, this card is a potentially a potentially a massive finisher for uh, a mage NR deck. So if you're running Illumini, you have to run either Banard or Aratusa or both, depending on what you want to use them on. But uh, if you look at the average value a Banard student gets, it's not very difficult to get the patients to four or five uh, or four plus on both of those cards because while they are controlled, you know there are ways to kind of you know resurrect them with Shani or you know Necromancy or play copies of them that can be protected with either Adalia or the brand new Chapter of Wizards, which I will come to. Uh, there's also the NR card, uh, which is called, uh, shoot, I'm forgetting the name of it. It's a special card. Where are you? Where art thou? Yeah, this one right here. Rune Word, right? You can spawn one potentially, if you're lucky, with a shield. And that's really good. Um, it is create though, so it is not guaranteed, but getting either of them is not bad at all. As long as you're getting one of the students, you're going to be happy. So get the patience value up. And if the patience value of, on either of those cards hits four minimum, this card gains zeal, which means you can drop it on the board for as an 8 for a 6 minimum. That's really good. This card is awesome. I love the effect. I think it's such a unique effect. A lot of text for it, but it's a very unique effect. Uh, I love this kind of stuff because this is the kind of stuff I'd like to see more in Gwent. Very deck uh, cards that force you to build a deck in a very certain way. Like that's, what, that's one of the reasons why my favorite card in the game is Collusion from Syndicate. Because it forces you to build a deck, a unique deck, that takes advantage of all the tags, right? I love this card. I think I would give this a three point a four. I think I think it's a solid. Hmm. If it's a mage centric deck, I think this is a four because I think it's not that difficult to gain high patience values, right? Outside of it, not that great. Probably drops down to a three then, right? But I, honestly, I'm gonna give this a four. I think this is such a such an interesting effect. Uh, I might be wrong. This card might just be shit. But you obviously want to get the zeal effect. If you get the order, it's not the best. Because at that point, it's playing as like a 7 or a 6 for 6, which isn't great at all. But as a anything more than that, it's pretty good. Especially with removal. Like, if you play it on the melee row with a Banard, that's a lot of removal on your side. With Zeal, that's insane. That's really good. Like, the removal potential in this card is what makes me want to give it a 4 out of 5. That's why. Alright, great card. Next up, Meditating Mage. I'm just going to say this right now. I think this is my favorite bronze in the entirety of the NR expansion. I love this card. It's a common card. 4 for 4. Uh, human mage, patience, order, gain vitality for zero turns, obviously based on the patience value. Bonded, also gain resilience. To become one with air, think away the ground. It's obviously Aang from, you know, the last airbender from the Avatar series, right? All grown up. But this card is incredible. Not because of the patience value. The patience value is fine. The patience effect is decent. The order effect is fine. It's a nice addition. Um, it's not as good as the Banard slash Aratusa effects because those effects are immediate. This one still needs to you know uh escalate because once you click it it's vitality which is one point a turn right but the bonded effect is insane bonded is an expensive expensive uh sorry not bonded resilience is an expensive keyword if you look at resilience uh really you're not going to show me specifics oh, that's why resilience let's see 13 provisions uh 12 provisions uh, Ligon Royal Locations, 10 provisions, 9 provisions with a, with a heavy deck building restriction, 9 provisions, 9 provisions, uh, let's move on, 8 provisions, not the best card in the world, right, 6 provisions, random, let's, this is to me, right, so you can see, resilience is a very expensive keyword, 
So to potentially get resilience on a 4P card is insane. I think this is an insane effect. And also this has great synergy with NRF cards, right? You play the first one from hand, right? If it survives with maybe, you know, um, your stratagem like Crystal Veil or any stratagem, right, to protect it. The second one, you can join it out with Amphibious Assault. And it comes down as a 9-point card because it's 4P card. That's really good, you know? And the second one gains resilience. And then what you can do is on the first one, which if it survives on the board, you can use a uh, Casting Contest. You can use this card to refresh its order and then give it Zeal because it's got Bonded now, right? Keep, keep in mind the the, uh, the, uh, the resilience is linked to the, bonded of, uh, the order effect, not the Bonded effect. That's not bad at all. That's a really good effect. This card is also fantastic with the neutral card, uh, Mushy Truffle. You know, I can see, you know, I can definitely see some people like uh, Fuchsia Briefs, uh, Mr. Habla, you know, Plain Talk John making like a meme deck where they try to run as much, get as much carryover using Meditating Mage in NR. I think that's going to be insane to run. You know, Idaran, uh, Adalia, or uh, Marching Orders, uh, Operator, all these cards, right? You can also get this with, um, again, why do I keep forgetting the name of this card? I really do apologize. But yeah, this card, Rune Word. You can get it with Rune Word. It's a mage. And shield? That's protection. Voice crack, but you get the point. This card is so good. I want to give this a 4.5 out of 5 just because of how potentially strong this card is. Um, you know, now you can potentially remove your Carrick Marines and break Devotion and run this card instead. 4P card with resilience is really good. And if it gets removed, you're not going to feel bad at all because that's your opponent committing removal on a 4P card. That's great. You know, if, if you boost the second one, if you boost one with tactical advantage, what are they going to do? Lock it? Well, you can just purify it. Uh, you can use, um, you, can, you can purify it if you want, but that doesn't matter, right? The second one is the one that's going to get the resilience. So the first one doesn't matter. Bonded works even if the card is locked, guys. Keep that in mind on the second effect, that is. This is a fantastic card. I love this card. It's such a great design. Love it. 4.5, easy. The only reason I'm not giving it 5, honestly, it might be a 5 out of 5 card as well. Like, I don't see why you would not run this card as just a one, uh, as just two of them in a deck. Why not? They're so good. In a mage deck, this is this is an auto-include. Auto-include. The potential with a rune word is insane, right? And we're also going to come to Chapter of Wizards, by the way, which has synergy with this. Alright, let's jump on to the epic card, Raffard's Vengeance. This was revealed by Mr. Habla, and the reveal was amazing, as usual. Watch the video, guys, if you haven't seen it. Alright, first of all, 5 strength, 9 provision card. It's got a lot of tags. Machine, mage, and a siege engine. Uh, this means it procs your siege scenario. It also gets buffed uh, by stuff like... Um, is it Kedweni? Is it, is it the Kedweni, if I'm not mistaken? No, it is... I believe it's uh, down here somewhere. It's an NR card... How many provisions are you? Uh, is it 5P? Yeah, this one. Siege Master. Boost an ally by 2. Boost adjacent siege engines by 1 whenever you play a Warfare card. This this gets boosted by this. Really good in that sense. Uh, and it's also Mage. And that's important to understand because it means it synergizes with stuff like uh, uh, Tissaia de Vries. Because she will reset the order of this. Uh, it gets boosted by Death Bolt. Uh, because he boosts all Mage on the board. Pretty good. Order, play a bronze unit from your hand, then draw a card. This alone would make this card a auto-include in inspired zeal decks. This alone is a 5 out of 5 in my opinion. Just this alone. In, in, in an inspired zeal deck, this is an auto-include. I repeat, an auto-include. One of the reasons why people run a card like uh, Fur Card, right? This card. Like, I mean, the spying effect is fun. And it's okay. But the main reason people run this card is because of the deploy effect. It lets you cycle through your deck, which is a very, very important thing. It, consistency or thinning is winning. And this card helps you with this. It's it's at 5 strength. The only reason it's at 5 strength is because it's an order, which means it's susceptible to being locked, killed, etc. Right? It's also got a cooldown of 5. That means that it's synergized with stuff like... Winch, for example. Or Priscilla, you can... You can heal an allied unit by 4 and reset its cooldown immediately. And it gains, it gains zeal, by the way. Priscilla is fantastic with this card. That's so good. But even better than that, you have a witch. Where's my witch? Here you go. Boost an allied unit by 5 and reduce its cooldown by 3. That's really good because the moment you use this cooldown, the next turn you come, uh, when it's your turn again, this cooldown goes down to 4. You use it on this, it goes down to 1. 
and you also boost it. So it becomes even harder to remove. And then you can use stockpile, your leader ability stockpile on this to again cycle a card immediately. Fantastic synergy right there. Such a good effect. But let's move on. There's more. Crew. Whenever you play a unit to, next to this card, damage a random enemy unit by two. Mages contribute to this card's crew ability. Step one. Lock the long arm lever to the hook trigger and place the load into the sling harness. Okay. Step two. Set the counterweight to no less than 80 times the load and line the glide track with a pyrite. Okay. Conjure and align the portal to a target location and leash hell. By the way, the card art is insane. I'm assuming this is Raffard. I'm, I'm, I have no idea who Raffard is, by the way. I'm just assuming he's a very famous mage. He's slinging some sort of pyrite missile through a portal onto a castle. Yeah, that is cheating. That's hacks. I call that hacks. But this crew effect is also really strong, right? Um, and the fact that mages contribute makes it quite a fantastic card to run in a mage NR deck. I, I think mage siege is going to be a very popular NR deck with inspired seal potentially. Because you can use inspired deal not just on Raphar's Vengeance, but also on Illumini if it does get zeal, on Banner students that have been resurrected by Shani to get a lot of value. I'm definitely excited to play a mage NR, uh, siege NR deck with this. I think it's going to be super fun. Uh, keep in mind that the, the units that you play next to this must be a soldier or a mage for it to damage a random enemy unit because that's how crew will be maintained. 5 out of 5 card, insane card, auto included inspired zeal. Outside inspired zeal, it's a little maybe a 4.4, 4.5 just because it's susceptible to uh, getting locked slash damaged. And that's the only reason why it's on a 5 out of 5 outside that. But inspired zeal has just got a brand new incredible card. I love it. And by the way, I have forgotten to play the music again. I do apologize. Alright. Let's jump on to, now, Chapter of Wizards. The legendary card and the final card coming to uh, Price of Power. This is the final card, guys. Chapter of Wizards is a location, a legendary card at 13 provisions. Resilience, deploy, spawn and play, Rune Word. So Rune Word, uh, for those again who don't know what it is, it is the, it is the same card I've been forgetting. Create and play in Bronze, Northern Realm Mage, and give it shield. That's a decent effect on its own already. Order, spawn and play a, co a, spawn a base copy of the last played allied Bronze Mage on this row. In the wake of the Novigradian Union, the Chapter of the Gift and the Art sought to ensure all magic was adequately regulated. Yet some mages refused to be restrained by the fetters of absolute authority, choosing instead to practice their craft away from prying eyes. Deemed enemies of the institution, these renegades were promptly hunted down and punished. Okay. Alright. I love this massive monolithic structure. It looks so cool. Great artwork as usual. Uh, so yeah, let's talk about the deploy effect. The deploy effect is okay. Uh, you can Depending on what card you hit, uh, let's look at the mages, right? So let's look at the mages we have. Uh, if you go to NR, card type, unit, color, bronze, go to mage. These are all the hits you're going to get. Plus uh, Illumini and Meditating Mage. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 different cards to get from. 9 different cards. Um, on an empty board, this is really bad. This is not. This is pretty decent with the shield. This is also decent. It, these two synergize with your Illuminis as well, by the way. So that's actually not bad at all. Um, this is eh on an empty board. This is okay. This is very dependent on the shield deck obviously and this is also not bad at all an engine a patience engine is pretty good so the the deploy effect is decent i would say it's not amazing but it's not bad it's a decent effect it's the order effect that has a lot of potential spawn a base copy of the last played allied bronze mage so the very next turn if you got a good hit on the on the rune word you can just you can spawn the same copy again except without a shield but it's actually decent you have two mages now on the board but also, you can use this order effect in another round because it has resilience. It's a location. Uh, you can use it to spawn a meditating mage potentially. More resilience? Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Um, one thing to keep in mind is you can use Dwim Vendra if I. Yeah. Dwim. There you go. You can use Dwim Vendra to refresh the order. But keep in mind, you do not want to click the order immediately because you'll spawn another Dwim Vendra then. So I guess you could keep refreshing the order infinitely by spawning multiple Dwim Vendras. But what you want to do is you play a Dwim Vendra, reset its order effect, and then the next turn, play a mage from your, a bronze mage from your hand, that's NR, uh, or any card. It, it's, it's not restricted to NR. Any bronze mage, and then click the order effect. Unless you want infinite Dwim Vendras for some reason, uh, which I don't think is very good. It's 
not the best effect. But yeah, this card is interesting. I don't... The only reason I think it's... Uh, I'm a little skeptic about this card is it's 13 provisions. It's a very expensive card. It's on par with, you know... Uh, where's the card? Where is my baby here? Amphibious Assault, right? Like, it's the same price as these two cards. It's just one below Siege. It's a very expensive card. And that's why I think that it's not a top-tier legendary. It's got a really interesting effect. I love the effect. I think it has potential. But I'm going to give this a 3 point. I think I'm going to give it a 3.5. I don't think it's 3. I think it's decent. It's got a lot of synergies. Uh, you can, you know, proc, use to proc Raphael's Vengeance. That's pretty good. Twice, by the way, because you get to spawn both of them and play them. Uh, it has synergy with Illumini. If you get one of the uh, students, it, it can proc another mage. More resilience. It's really good, you know. I think this card is 3.5. So there we go. That are those are the final card reveals. I'm gonna go back again uh, quickly in case you missed it. Four out of five, five out, uh, four out of five, almost a five in my opinion. Five out of five in inspired zeal and a three point five. I think the NR cards are fantastic. I love them, and the initial card is a four out of five. Alyssa Henson is great. With that, we come to the end of the card reveal. Now it's time for patch 9.4. As usual, guys, by the way, uh, there will be timestamps in the on the video, so you can skip to any section you want if you are not interested in, for example, the cards, or you just want to jump to the patch notes. All right. Update 9.4 marks the drop of third and final expansion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, main star, bunch of changes. Cool. Changes. Update the recommended cards in the deck builder for each leader ability. Okay, that's good. Uh, this is good for new, pl uh, new players getting into the game. Rework the implementation of how spying status is granted. The tooltips of affected cards have been adjusted. Spying is no longer implicitly granted to units that are moved to, spawn, or on or on or played on the opponent's side unless specified in the tooltip. Seize now gives slash remove spying before the unit is moved. Disloyal units all gain spying. This is actually a big one. This means that if you seize a unit, you can uh it will tick down your uh, Tanner turn code. It'll uh, give spying to it, which means it'll proc your uh, Thirsty Dames, your Seditious Aristocrats, your Impre Enforcer, I believe it's called, right? But also, it gives you a target for Artor Terra Nova. It did not work like this before. So, this is actually a pretty good change. Uh, Amnesty now is a much better card in Spy Decks. And funnily enough, uh, Spheres as well. So, yeah. Added the option to not save the deck after making changes. This is a this I love. I think this is a fantastic change. Not having to save a deck that you've been you know you've been building and thinking yeah it's not gonna work and just want to exit it, but having to save it and then delete it that was pretty annoying. But now you don't have to do that. I love this. It's a very nice quality of life feature. I'm a huge fan of this. All right, new features: Harvest of Sorrow, two new reward books by the way: Octavia Hale and Vilgefortz. By the way, I got a comment in the last video. Uh, I think it was the Skellige video where somebody told me that the lore for uh. Ryo, uh, Ryohan, Ryohan, however you call him, is actually in one of the lower book, uh, reward books for Melusine. So that's, I thank you for that. I did read it and I now know a little more about him. Pretty cool. Anyway, new reward books, trees for Octavia Hill and Vilgefortz. That's pretty nice. New product includes kegs for price of power. So now for those players who do not have enough scraps but have all the ore in the world and you want to make a, uh, start collecting the price of power cards, you can finally do it starting tomorrow. Uh, so, you know, if you got a bunch of kegs or you got a bunch of ore, open them up, uh, uh, use the ore on the price of power cards. So that's good to know. Way of the Witcher kegs will be removed from the shop. All right, cool. All right, here come the changes. Count Caldwell. Tooltip now specifies that Count Caldwell will gain spying when moving to the opponent's side and lose spying when moving back to your side. Even more thematic. This traitorous bastard, you know, just became a little more thematic now. Nice change. Siegfried or Danelle is now 6 power. That's a big, that's a nice buff to my um, Mortar deck because I love running Siegfried with uh, Mortar. Just purify all the rats and stuff. I like this. It's a nice upgrade. Uma's Curse is also now 10p. It's a nice buff. Peller is a 4 provision card now. Ooh. Not bad, actually. Is Peller a mage, by the way? I don't think so. No, it's just a human. Okay. At least it's a cheaper offensive purifier for NR. I still can't believe NR doesn't have an offensive purifier. But hey, what are you going to do, right? Okay. It's a decent buff. It's, if you want a neutral... If you're a faction that doesn't have access to an offensive purifier, you have another cheaper option at 4P. Nice change. All right, monsters. Mamina is now 12 provisions. It's been nerfed again. Ooh. I mean, it's still a fantastic card. It's still 20 points for 12 provisions. It's a great card. This just makes it a little trickier to include in decks now. Like, if I give an example for uh, my White Frost deck, right? I have Mamino, so I lose a provision here, which means I would probably sacrifice, you know, 
I'll remove a bruiser, I think, and put in a 4P card. I'll, run, I'll remove a bruiser, and I would run a Wild Hunt Hound. Simple as that. So the, guard, the deck would look like this. Uh, there you go. And now I have the new Mamuna in the deck automatically. Not much to change. All right, uh, it's an, it, it's it's warranted. You know, Mamina is still a busted card, and this just makes it slightly more annoying to include in decks. But it's still going to be an, almost an auto include on every monster deck, in my opinion, because the potential of hitting 20 points for 12 provisions without much setup is way too good to pass upon. Queen of the Night power change from six to five, bleeding duration change from four to three. One thing you're gonna notice, I have skimmed through the patch notes by the way, is that a lot of the purifier cards have been cheapened. Uh, I think they want to encourage the purifier cards to be used a bit more. So Queen of the Night, uh, or they have been buffed in some way. So Queen of the Night now has much more tempo. The initial tempo is better. She's now a six, but the bleeding duration is has been reduced by one. So you guys don't know what Queen of the Night does. She's this card right here. Uh, give bleeding four, which is now three uh, from tomorrow. And the range effect is a purify. So if you do use her to purify, she's a six for six, which is pretty good. So, you know, in case you're playing a vampire monster deck, well, you got a slightly better purify now. Cool. Nagel Forest Taskmaster is the other Purify card. It is now a 4 for 4 instead of a 5 for 5. So, Taskmaster is this card right here. Instead of a 5 for 5, it's a 4 for 4. Not bad, actually. You know, much cheaper uh, Purify for your White Frost deck. Potentially, I could actually run remove this and run this. That could also be the new um, White Frost deck. Uh, that's actually pretty decent. I like this change a lot. And you're going to see this again with all the other factions as well. Skellige, Artis has been changed. Provision cost changed from 8 to 12. Okay, so he's more expensive. Ability change to deploy. Play a 4 provision cultist from your deck. Ranged. Whenever a unit is played, damage it by half its current power. So his range effect is still there. But he's been given a, slight, a, a really strong tutor effect. Play a 4P cultist. Okay, uh, so cultist, cultist. 4P cultist. There we go. Let's see, what does Artis have? Uh, so Artis has access to Swalbard Fanatic. That's actually pretty good. If you run a Swalbard Fanatic with Artis, this thing drops immediately at 6 because it gets damaged by 2. So it transforms. So it's a 10 point play with Artis. With Thinning. Not bad at all. Uh, on Disgrace Brawler, it's actually a grief. You're actually just destroying it. On Hermit, does this thing, this thing just dies, right? No. It would be damaged by 3 and then it would be damaged by half so we go down to one so yeah not good on this eh, eh. honestly the artist change is nice but we need more good 4p cultists that's what we need the only good one i see is fanatic right now it's a 10 for 12 with denning cool I, I i i do like this change a lot but i think artist needs more 4p cards but this does allow them to uh introduce more 4p cultists that will always make artists better and better and better it's a good change very nice change Gremist, provision cost change from 7 to 6, so same thing as the Purify effect. Uh, Hammond, power change from 6 to 7, okay. So Hammond is the movement card, the pirate movement card. Uh, this guy right here. So he's now a 7 for 8. Alright, nice change, really nice change. Uh, Sigrifus right now gives Doom to the summon unit. So this is just to be consistent with the other resurrect effects, but also because Fukushima is now in the game. Actually, it's a good idea to keep this page open, by the way, yeah. So yeah, if you guys don't know, Fukushima is a new Skellige card coming to the game that allows you to resurrect any Skellige unit from your graveyard that is 10 provisions or less. So I think because of how many resurrect effects are now in Skellige, they just want to make sure that you can't, you know, abuse anything with Sigrifus Rite, right? Uh, this, keep in mind that if you use Sigrifus Rite on uh, Melusine, she will not gain Doomed because Melusine has a Veil. So there is that. Keep that in mind. Uh, that's actually a, a very important interaction to remember. Uh, this allows you to resurrect Melusine multiple times without risking getting banished unless it gets heat waved or purified. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, Wild Carl is now 7p. Another buff to this guy, really? Wild Carl. Wow. This is an even better option of a pack uh, for. Uh... Why well, can't I remember the name of the leader? Orsine Ritual. Yeah. It's a 12 for 7 with leader use. Really good chain. Uh, really nice buff to this card. 7p as well. Wow. Wow. Okay. That's a nice buff. Crow Clan Druid. Power change from three to 4 to 3. Provision cost change from 5 to 4. Okay. So, if I'm not mistaken, Crow Clan is this one. Yeah. Boost adjacent beasts by 2. So, this place is an 8 for 5. 
But now it is a 7 for 4. Right? 2 plus 2 plus 3. Yeah, 7 for 4. And it's a druid as well. Okay, it's another 4p option. I like it. I like it. It's a nice... Uh, I would say it's a buff to... Um, hybrid Beast Druid decks. Not bad. Not bad at all. It's a nice change. Not much to say about it. Uh, Dim and Light Longship is now 4p as well. Ooh, that's a big one. That is a big one. Yeah, this card now 4p is actually a big one. This is a very good card. That's a big buff. That's a very big buff. You can actually pull it out with Portal now. So as long as you play the Portal on the range row, you can actually get these long ships with thinning. That's actually decent. Melusine Cultist Power Change from 3 to 4. This is a big buff. This is a very big buff. Melusine Cultist is this guy here. The one, one of the reasons why this card was not as good was because it's an order with only 4 effective uh, strength to remove it. And now that it's at 4 strength, it's got 5 effective... Um, Strength, which means you have to use something like Rebuke or, you know, some combination of pings to get this down. And this card is fantastic now. This actually is a really good card because you, it synergizes with Messenger of the Sea and Little half Fru. Not bad at all. I love it. This is a big buff. That's a big buff to Rain Skellige. I love this change. Very good buff. It's essentially a Temerian Drummer if there's Rain on the opposite row. So, yeah. Really big buff. I love it. Swallow Butcher is now partial from 4 to 5. Okay. Okay, the Butcher, uh, the Butcher. Swalblood Butcher, okay. So this is 5. Damage an ally unit by 2, then give an enemy unit bleeding for 3 turns. So effectively, it's a 6 or 4. But it's still not good with Artist, right? Because it gets damaged by... This Artist, Artist rounds up in damage, right? Eh. Not a huge fan of this change. It's okay. Trophy Catch received a new name and type. It is now a Whale Harpooner. A 2 power, 4 provision unit, cost unit with deploy. Move an enemy unit to the other row, then damage it by the number of units on that row. Okay, so Whale Harpooner has finally been returned to its original state from midwinter. So, it's essentially the, the same card. Uh, trophy Catch. There you go. Except now it's a, two, it's a 2 strength, 4 provision unit that moves a unit to the other row and damages it by the amount of units on that row. I assume it's going to be a ship. I assume. They haven't mentioned if it's a ship or not. Uh, it's actually a decent card, you know. It could be a decent card in a pirate ship deck. It's a nice ro form of row punish. You could clog... Uh, yeah, decent card. Will it see play? Probably not. I still think it's an eh card, but it's a nice buff to it. Alright, NR. Kukudak, deploy, deploy, replace with Zeal Order. This basically means uh, it synergizes with Lyrian Arbalest, Lyrian Cavalry, and it can be reset by uh, Mandrake or Viraxus. Okay. You know what this means, though? Uh, this potentially means it could get sniped by um, Pitfall Trap. Because this is a 6p card, so it just kind of ping it down, and you might never get to use its uh, zeal effect. Uh, the order effect, which is... I think it's a small quality of life buff overall. But yeah, not much to say. Ildiko, this is a big one. I did. I remember reading this, and I thought, yeah, that's a big one. Power change from 5 to 6, okay. Boost from the order changed from 5 to 4. Okay, so she's still a 10 for 10. But now she's mo slightly more difficult to kill. Granting zeal no, wrong, lo no longer requires Ildiko to be inspired. This is a big one. This forces your opponent to kill Ildiko. Uh, because otherwise, uh, you know, every uh, card after that just gains zeal. Like, holy shit, that's a... And she's a mage, by the way. This card is going to be seen in mage in our decks. I... Definitely want to try this out, especially with the new uh, Raffard's Machine, the the card we just saw. Raffard's Vengeance. Uh, so you know, if Ildiko is alive on the board, this thing gets zeal on the next turn. Not just this, Selkirk, Anseus, Bloody Baron, all those zeal effects, really good. Alumni, Banar Student, Aratusa Student. Wow, that's a big buff. No longer needing to be inspired is a big buff, and it's only nine provisions, which means you can pull it out with Amphibious Assault as well. I love this effect. I think it's really good. It's a very good buff to Ildiko. Oh, this is a this is a card to be scared of now. This is a card you need to control. I mean, some people would previously control it sometimes, like they'd sometimes lock it or they sometimes kill it, but not always, you know. Once it because uh, you know, it was a threat, but not an immediate threat. Now this is also an immediate threat. Be very careful. Ildiko has just entered the battlefield. I love it. Uh, Kiramets is now six power. Um, sure, I don't think you'd ever run this in a mage deck though. She's too slow. 
Vitality is a little too slow. It is not as slow as normal Vitality because she gives it to two units. But, yeah. Sabrina Glyph sick. Provision cost changed from 6 to 8. Okay, that's a nerf. But, damage from the Death Wish changed from 2 to 3. So she's like a Dragon's Dream now. Yeah, she's like a Dragon's Dreams now. She's basically... Uh, except she's not on a timer. We just have to kill her. That's actually a decent buff. I would say it's... Is it a buff? It depends, right? Like, you want to kill, you want to hit at least 3 units for full damage to get the value of its provisions. I mean, I think it's a buff overall, I think. If you're running Sab Sabrina's Glevisig, you are trying to play it on a huge row. And in that scenario, it's going to be playing for a lot of points. Yeah, this is really good. Especially against Squirtel, where, th where they run a bunch of Whisperers. You just clog their row and then snipe it with a Revenant. That entire row vanishes. I think I would say, I'm inclined to say it's a small buff. I think this is a small buff. Damn Sorceress, cooldown change from 2 to 1. That's a big buff to shield decks. Uh, Damn Sorceress for those uh, forgetting what it does. Damned is this one. Destroy a unit's shield and boost self by 2. It's a big buff to shield decks. Uh, this allows you to use the Immortal Cavalry Sorceress combo every turn now instead of every alternate turn. I like this change a lot. It's a big buff. I like it a lot. Temerian Drummer is now 4 power. Armor change from 1 to 0. Ah, so now it, it got it got a very similar buff to Melisand Cultist. The only difference is this doesn't have armor, this does have armor, but that's because this is order, this is this is not an order. Very nice buff. It means that Amnesty no longer yoinks it, Swear is no longer yoinks it. Um yeah, I like it. Nice buff to Northern Realms. Squirtle, Barnabas Beckenbauer, boost change from two to three. Ooh. This means that Barnabas is now playing for fifteen potentially. Uh nine plus six is fifteen. Yeah, this guy now plays potentially for fifteen. Not counting any Harmony procs. It's a nice buff to Harmony. This guy definitely has not seen as much play. It's potentially a 15 for 10. Okay, a nice healthy buff to Barnabas Beckenbauer. Now, this is a big one. Harold Gord, self-boost from the deploy, is now capped at 12. This is a big hit to Squirtle uh, Spelletal decks. It's not a... It doesn't make them weak. It, do, it makes them weaker. There's a difference. Spelletal is still going to be a very effective deck, but now Harold Gord is capped at 15 points, as long as he hasn't received any hand buffs from Hawker Smugglers, Ithleen, so on and so forth. Because he himself is a base strength 3, and he's capped at 12. Uh, the reason they said he's capped at 12 is because uh, the max, the minimum amount of units you must run in a deck is 13, so the remaining special uh, cards can be all specials. That's 12, so that's why. Uh, this in this allows uh, Syndicate to still use Harold Gord if you're going for like a crime deck. And we'll come to Syndicate, by the way, because uh, I think a crime deck is something that Syndicate might want to look at. But yeah, this is a very healthy nerf to him. I love this change. Harold Gord definitely needed a nerf. The guy was playing for absurd amount of points for 7 provisions. And this is a nice way to prevent uh, any changes to provision without hitting Syndicate hard as well. I really like this change. So once again, Harold Gord is now capped at 15 points. 15. Assuming he has not been hand buffed uh, previously. There we go. Ida, Emian, Ipsibne, power change from 5 to 6, vitality duration change from 4 to 3. So same thing as the Queen of the Night change. Basically a more, um, an immediate presence with the Purify if you go for the Purify option, right? Zoltan Warrior, provision cost change from 11 to 10. So a nice buff to Dwarves. Uh, this is the one that spawns the Rowdy Dwarves, right? Zoltan, yeah, it's this one right here. Yeah. So now he's a 10 for 10. Um... Which isn't the best, but you know it gives you more dwarves, which means potentially more value on your mark of guard, and potentially more boosts from uh, Brewer Hook. Lovely buff. I like it. It's a nice change. Uh, Dwarf Berserker is now power change from three to four. This is actually a buff to yeah this card right here, which means this is also buff to Monroe. Ooh. So assuming so that's why you play Zoltan. Assuming both those cards survived. Monroe is now playing for uh, 10 points, plus 2 pings on deploy, so 12 points. He's a 12 for 12 on deploy, assuming the Rowdy Dwarves have not been damaged in any way. This is actually a buff to Monroe as well. That's a nice buff. Alright, pretty cool, pretty cool. And finally, Brighthead Sapper, the Purify card, is now a 4 for 4 as well, instead of a 5 for 5. Same thing as the uh, Taskmaster buff. There we go. Uh, Nilfgaard. Treason now additionally gives spying to the target unit. Okay, that's a nice buff to a spy deck. Okay, uh, Usurper now mentions that it gives spying to the spawn operatives in accordance with the changes to spying. Okay, there we go. This applies to all three forms. Spotter. 
Okay, this is a big one. So, what they've done is, you guys all know that Wiper Witcher Alchemist is a very popular card, right? A very loved, beloved card. People love the effect. I'm kidding. Everybody hates it. I hate it. But what they've done now is they've swapped the effect of Spotter and Wiper Witcher Alchemist. The reasoning they gave was that they did not want people to be able to play this card from Gorthal Gwaed, but at the same time, they liked the effect of the card. I don't agree with the second point, but hey, you know what? At least, no longer can Nilfgaard proactively just say, hey, screw, I'm going to screw with your deck right now. I'm going to slap Gorthal Gwaed on the board and swap the card. I love this. I think that's a very healthy change, uh, what they've done. So Spotter now is a uh, power change from 1 to 5. Ability swap with a Viper Witcher Alchemist. And now it reads Deploy. Look at the top 3 cards of your deck and put one on top. Then swap the top card of your opponent's deck with yours. So essentially, it's uh, the old Viper Witcher Alchemist. But this card now is power change from 5 to 2. Ability swapped with Spotter and now reads Deploy Melee Reveal a random unit from your opponent's deck. Uh, yeah. So this card is now is still bad. Like it's this card is just bad, but at least you can no longer go Gorthagwade and screw with your opponent. I like this change a lot. It's a very healthy change. Nobody ran sp uh, Spotter before. It's a very bad card. No consistent very little form of consistency, so it's not good. And this just means that you're never going to see Spotter play it unless somebody's trying to really meme you in a soldier deck. Because Spotter is a soldier, by the way. I love it. I am a huge fan of this change. Syndicate, Blood Money, Provision Bonus Change from 15 to 16. Okay, so that's a buff to the leader. Uh, Syndicate leader, this one. One extra provision in that deck, okay. Tamar Stranger, Power Change from 4 to 5. I like this a lot because there have been a lot of uh, uh, Witch Hunters introduced in Price of Power. And so they're just trying to make, you know, nudge people to use Tamar Stranger more. Like, come on, guys, try out a Witch Hunter deck. It might be decent. And I think it might be, you know. Ooh, the big one. Tunnel Drill. Ability change from... Ability change to Profit 2, Fee 2. Okay, so now gives you one extra coin. So previously it was Profit 1. Fee 2. Damage an enemy unit by 1. Okay. If you played a crime this turn, damage an enemy unit by 3 instead. Okay. This is a very interesting change. So essentially what this means is... The initial turn you play Tunnel Drill, it is a very bad card. Because you can't play Tunnel Drill and a crime at the, in the same turn. You can't right so your opponent has a chance to kill it or lock it or whatever but the next turn if you play a crime then as long as you have the coins you can do your board wipe shenanigans that people were used to before this change this is a big change it hits tunnel drill quite hard because now it becomes a card that you can't uh, that you know your opponent just sits there and looks at it thinking shit why did i log into gwen today and play it against syndicate right it allows them to answer it which is a very big change very big change um Uh, essentially, what they've done is they're trying to push Tunnel Drill to a more crime-based archetype, so which is what the Kron's uh, tag it was meant for, but without having to, you know, just slap on, you know, Novigrad Injustice, slap it in the middle and just go, you know, screw you, screw you, screw you, screw you, screw you, you know, your engine doesn't live, uh, screw you, screw you. I like this change a lot. I think it's a very healthy change. It allows the card to be very strong if it survives, um, but if it, but it gives your opponent a chance to respond, and that's the big thing. Very, very healthy change. I like it a lot. Um, so on deploy, it's a 7 for 7. It's a 7p card that gives you 2 coins. So yeah, 7 for 7. Uh, the fee, as usual, is still really bad. You don't want to damage by 1. So you want to play a crime. Love this change. Very big fan of this. Alright, that's all the changes out there. Let's talk about the game fixes. The client window no longer registers input when not in focus. This is a big one. Uh, the game does bug sometimes. So if I alt tab out and I'm you know clicking YouTube or something the game is registering inputs, so I might accidentally start a game, which is annoying. It is no longer possible to queue up conflicting actions on a gamepad. Okay, I don't play gamepads, so I'm not sure about this. Leticia Charbonneau's tooltip now correctly shows that she can increase her own patience. Uh, this is a quality of life change. Nice. Um, the Doom status can no longer be granted to units with Veil when being played or summoned from the graveyard. I actually didn't know this was a bug. I thought, okay, I guess the Melusine thing works now. Okay, okay, never mind. So apparently, if you res Melusine with Sigrifus right before this, she would be doomed. I don't think I've ever seen that interaction, or I I just never paid attention, I guess. Okay, so now you can use Sigrifus right on Melusine, and it'll work as intended. Okay, really good. Good, good, good. Salamandra Abomination will now correctly trigger VFX when purifying itself. Okay. Playing specials from the opponent's deck, example by Cantarella, will now correctly update Orb of Insight's counter. Playing specials from the opponent's deck. Okay, so if you're Nilfgaard, for example, or you're playing Draft, and you have an Orb of Insight in your graveyard, 
and you play a special by yoinking it with Cantrella, it'll up it. Okay, okay, I didn't know that was a bug. Right, good, makes sense. And finally, to say of Rise now correctly resets the order abilities of all mages, not only those from Northern Realms. There we go, guys. That is patch 9.4. I'm a huge fan of this patch. I think there are some really nice changes here. They've tackled some cards that were unhealthy, like Wipe, Wipe of Witch Alchemist in a nice way. Tunnel Drill. Um, I mean, Horson's Freak Show still exists, but that card is not as swingy, right? Like, it's 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 two damage instead of three, and that is a difference. That does make a difference. So, uh, yeah, I'm a huge fan of these changes. I love it. I cannot wait to play some new game uh, with the new cards tomorrow. Um, expect there to be... Uh, I'm going to first focus on Skellige first. I really want to play a Skellige rain deck. And then I want to play an NR Siege Mage deck. I'm very excited. And then I'll jump into Squirtle uh, for the hand buff deck that I want to try. So there we go, guys. It's been a long one. Uh, as you, uh, hope you guys did enjoy this. Do leave some comments in the description below. Let me know. Uh, give me your thoughts on these cards. And of course, uh, Alyssa ben Henson. And do you like these patch notes? Do you think there's something missing here? And also, yeah, check out the Gwent update because they do give an update on the future of Gwent when it comes to expansions and what they've learned. Uh, I think what they said is they're giving us a roadmap in December. And in December, for Christmas, we're going to be getting 12 new cards. One of them being Radovid. He is returning to the game. So that's exciting. So yeah, there you go, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, please do show your support below. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care.